and you probably read the title and you probably think I'm insane for even trying this but in my mind I think it'll work because there's other things out there like it and what I'm talking about is a chocolate dip chocolate covered pork belly now think about it for a minute now so you know I film this intro at the very last even after my outro because I wanted to taste this before I went any further I wanted to be, get excited about it there was no way to really get excited about it until you actually try it and like yes that worked we'll get started with it right after this So you might be asking yourself, what in the world is he doing and how in the world did he come up with this idea? I do a lot of thinking, I do a lot of brainstorming, and I was just laying around the other day when I think my best, just no work, nothing occupy my mind, and I got to thinking about, you know, like pig candy, like bacon. I've done it on previous videos where you add the brown sugar and the maple syrup, and it's just absolutely delicious. It's sweet and salty, and that's kind of what this same thing is but it's on a different level because you got you got the richness of the pork belly and all that fat plus the richness of the chocolate and there is such a thing already it's called chocolate covered bacon it actually exists it's in some of your gourmet food shops they serve it at like world fairs and such as that it's been around it's nothing new this came from Matador Prime Steak Company, and these love bugs are just everywhere. Now, in the fashion similar to what you would do for the pork belly burn ends, we're going to simply cut these into strips. And last one, dead center. All right, now from there, we're going to cut them across the other direction. About the same width. Now keep in mind, pork belly is really rich in fat. It's somewhere around 50-50. So therefore, you're going to have a lot of shrinkage on this. It's the reason you want to go a little bit bigger initially to get them down to bite-sized pieces by the time it's all said and done. Now, so you know, about this time yesterday, I coated top and bottom, both sides, with a coarse salt. I placed them on this wire rack, placed it in the refrigerator overnight. We did a dry brine. Just a good layer of salt both sides and normally you really wouldn't want to do that on pork but being what this is I want to make sure there is enough salt content to go with the sweet so by doing a dry brine it actually penetrates the salt all the way into the meat I'm gonna take and lay these on a separate wire rack here oh in case you're wondering this pork belly from Matador Prime Steak Company came without the skin. It's just a fat layer on there. That's one thing I love about his meats. In addition to them tasting great, they do all the trimming for you. We are not putting any kind of barbecue rub on this. We're going salt. This is black pepper. And in addition to that, cayenne pepper. These are going to have a little kick. Just let the cayenne rain down on them. I'm doing this side, then we're going to flip them over, do the other side. Actually, we're going to do all sides, all six sides. On to the Camp Chef Woodwind. So you know I'm cooking these at 275 degrees for about two and a half hours. I am using apple smoke. We're going to close the lid and let this scene do its job. 
about a month and a half ago, Sarah Bezik, she's the daughter of David Bezik. I did a shout out for him at her request. He's been a follower of mine for a long time, loves my stuff. And I, I got a real kick out of that and so did he. But she told me the next day that she really appreciated that. And uh, I'm like, no problem. I, I love doing stuff like that, especially for my viewers, you know. And she wanted to send me some cheese. They live in Wisconsin and asked me what I would like. I'm like, well, I love blue cheese, but I like all kind of cheese, cheddars and all, but just surprise me, you know, it, if I remember correctly, that's what I said. And I'll tell you what, I got a package in yesterday that absolutely floored me. Let me show you some of the stuff that her and her dad, David, sent. First, this is some honey. Now, a friend of hers, a friend of hers actually makes this honey and they included that into the package and I will be using this today in this cook. They actually sent me out two of these. This is a uh, Glacier Point Blue Cheese. Cannot wait to try this. I see myself making some blue cheese dressing either later on tonight or tomorrow for salad. Absolutely love blue cheese. I've got a cow feta cheese. All this is Wisconsin cheeses. I've got two of these and I'll probably try one of these here in a minute. This is cranberry chipotle cheddar and that's uh, the same thing, cranberry chipotle cheddar. This is a uh, farmer's cheese, Vern's farmer's cheese. All this I cannot wait to try and this really caught my attention as well. This is a three year aged cheddar cheese, Car Valley cheese. Check that out. Absolutely love cheddar. This is going to be good. I've also got bread cheese. Now she told me what to do with the bread cheese and, and how to use this. In addition to that, I've got two bags of cheese curds. And she also told me just to thaw, not thaw these out, they're not frozen, but to warm these up to room temperature to where you get that squeak, squeaky cheese. Now in addition to the cheeses, she also sent, this is a 10 pack of the original cow pie. Let's see, horse apples, moochus, uh, utter fingers, <laughs> utter fingers, cow pie, cow pie, and cow pie. These are definitely candies. She also threw in a couple of these. This is called cow pie. This is like a uh, chocolate liqueur. If though this wasn't enough, take a look at that. This is a mixture of six different beers that they've picked. Now, Sarah told me this is her favorite out of all these beers that they have up there and it's called Spotted Cow. I just want to thank y'all again, David and Sarah Beasy. I've never had any subscriber ever be this generous. Th this was way generous. And I'm not gonna tell people your business, but just the shipping on this was very expensive, let alone what all this must have cost. Cannot thank you enough. All right, we have been going two and a half hours. I'm gonna remove all of these pork belly cubes. We're gonna to toss them over into this pan real quickly all we're gonna do is add in some butter this is like semi melted you can put it on cold it don't really matter this is going to add some more richness to the already fatness of the pork belly now I'm gonna add the first layer of sweetness into this and this is the honey that I showed you earlier that was sent to me by Sarah and David Bezik don't be shy with it I think anybody that's cooked any amount of pork for very long knows that sweet and pork pairs very well. Now we're going to cover this very tightly with aluminum foil. If you notice, we had a beautiful color on that pork belly. It's got all the smoke it needs. All it needs now is just to finish getting tender. It was already getting pretty tender. I'm going to probably go about an hour on this. We'll check it at an hour anyway. And I think we're going to be pretty close to being done. All right, back onto the smoker. I'm gonna keep it running at 275 degrees. Place it in there, close her up. We're gonna check it in one hour. I pulled them off the smoker. I've let them cool down to where I could handle these. And I'm simply just rubbing these in this butter and honey mixture. And I'm setting these on this rack. This is our very first layer of sweet. And of course the butter is just fortifying the fat that's already in these. While I'm letting the pork belly continue to cool off, I've got an orange that I've already zested. I've removed all the zest, and I'm just gonna squeeze the juice into this 
pot we're going to heat it up we're just going to reduce this down at a low heat and that will concentrate the orange flavor and I'll show you later what I'm doing with the zest I'm getting ready to make the ganache over here I have measured out 12 ounces of bittersweet chocolate and over here to my left I have in 12 ounces of heavy cream and I've already got the fire on we're gonna bring this up to a simmer just as it begins to boil we're gonna come over here and pour it onto the chocolate chips and I'll be back with you when that happens as you can see I'm just now coming up to a boil we're gonna cut our fire off and from here it goes over into the chocolate chips pour that over onto the chocolate chips and we're just going to let that sit there for like maybe three to four minutes. There's a thing about doing an emulsion between like cream and chocolate. And it really does better if you let it cool down somewhat. So that's the reason for letting this wait. We're going to give it probably around four minutes. It's been sitting four minutes. And as you can see, I've already got this looking like a ganache. And all I've done... And unfortunately, I didn't capture the beginning of it on camera. I thought I had them running. I didn't. Cameraman had to leave, so I'm totally out of sync with running cameras and cooking and doing all that at the same time. I guess I need to start practicing up on that. But anyway, all I did was just start mixing it. It started coming all together. It's just cream. It's just the uh, chocolate chips. And I did add about maybe one teaspoon of butter. That butter is just going to help give it a little bit more gloss. Now... We said this is going to be spiced chocolate. So I'm going in like a heaping teaspoon, probably closer to a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Just going to blend that in. The last ingredient is going to be this orange juice that I condensed. That was around a teaspoon of real orange juice. Now that I've showed you how to make a ganache, you could use this for so many things desserts your cake cupcakes uh, donuts and you see me add the orange juice you can also add in like rum you can flavor it with different liqueurs and there's just a lot of things you can do you can add peppermint flavor to it and all such as that but we're kind of going for more of that bittersweet chocolate that's not super sweet you know because we are mixing it with pork belly and we're fixing to dip our pork belly into this this is done and we're going to see how this plays out. Alright, I'm just going to take some bamboo skewers. You could also use toothpicks. And all I'm going to do is take and stab a piece of the pork belly, as you see right here. We're just going to run this through the chocolate. Just like that. With toothpicks, you could just actually stick a toothpick in each one. That way you have a handle to eat them with. You could also do it with these skewers here, but this is working out good. Completely coat it. Lay them side by side just like we had them before. And all your extra chocolate is just going to drip off of that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Just as soon as I come back, we're going to plate it and we're going to try it out. I have applied the ganache to all of these pork belly pieces. I have let them cool somewhat. They're still not completely cool. Running out of time here. So what I'm doing now is I've got the zest from that orange that I showed you earlier. And I'm just going through here and applying just a little bit across the top. It's more for garnish, but that orange is really going to make these pop as well. And remember, I had that condensed, concentrated orange juice that I actually uh, mixed into the chocolate. Gives it just a hint of orange. You could also use a extract, orange extract, without doing what I did. If you want to do that, it would probably give it more of an orange flavor. And by the way, my wife, my granddaughter, and a friend of my wife has already tried this. They absolutely love it. So I, I can't wait to try this. I have a piece of uh, mint. Here we go. And by the way, this is another one of them herbs that I can't stand, but it makes for a great presentation. I just don't like that mint flavor from it. And there you go. Alright, I'm going to pick this one right here. 
the skewer just went right through it. It's, I meant just like butter, it's so tender. Here we go. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> that totally works. Just what I was imagining. You got the sweet, you got the salty, you got the savory, you got the little spice in there. That orange with that zest really made that orange pop. This is not something you would do very often. It's very decadent, it's very rich. Not just from the pork belly, but also from the very rich chocolate and the cream and everything, the butter. I mean, it's a very decadent dish. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's a far cry from what I normally do. And you're, you have probably been asking yourself, why in the world is he doing this? Well, that's why, because I love to experiment. I love to think outside the box. And every now and then it works. This worked. Until next time, smoke your ribs.